Hello, it is Friday, June 10th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday puzzle today, so a themeless puzzle. Uh, many of you were, well, some of you were uh, upset about the inclusion of rebuses in yesterday's puzzle. I know those are often controversial among some solvers, but some of you seem to enjoy the theme quite a bit. I noticed a few people in the um, Discord chat server very much enjoyed it. But regardless of where you fall on that, we can we can be certain today's themeless puzzle will not include rebuses. Um, and this rebus-free edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Alex, Bradley Pirtle, and as always, the inestimable hood monster, and the invaluable Timothy Mark. So thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for directly supporting this channel. I do very much appreciate that. And speaking of the Patreon campaign, um, yesterday I put up the most recent New York Times acrostic puzzle. I had a very, as I often do, I had a bit of a slow start, but then really started moving along uh, once I started getting a few suspicions about words in the in the quotation. Anyway, if you're a Patreon subscriber, you can go watch that acrostic solve now. And if you'd like to become one, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solved. There's a link in the description field underneath the video. And for a few pounds a month or the equivalent in your local currency, you can get access to that video and all the rest of the bonus video solves that have gone up to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. So today I'm also... Um, do to uh, complete the weekly uh, Friday mini puzzle speed solve where I solved the last week of minis quickly. Anyway, that's that for the Patreon. Um, do subscribe to the channel if you've been enjoying these videos and maybe maybe like this video if you liked it, regardless of your feelings on rebuses. All right, let's get on to the solve. This is a Friday puzzle constructed by Blake Sloniker. I think Blake Sloniker's third puzzle for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. As we know, it's a Friday puzzle, so no theme, just straightforward solving, but possibly tricky. Puzzling start. Puzzling start. I don't know. So often when you see start, that means a word that could precede the given word. So a word that comes before puzzling, especially with a question mark at the end, but I don't really know what it is. Puzzling start. Could be something you say when you're puzzled or about to solve a puzzle. <laughs> Let's solve it. No. Uh, buttonhole. Um, it could be sort of meaning to typecast somebody to put them in a particular role, but it could also mean a literal buttonhole, an eyelet, maybe? Do you call it, is a buttonhole an eyelet or is that just... Uh, I'm not sure. I'm just seeing if there's anything I can immediately... I don't know. I might delete that. Let's just keep going. Like some rum. Some rum is spiced. So perhaps that's the answer. Let's check the crosses. Harmonizes. Could be syncs, as in synchronizes. Harmonizes is... Uh, pairs... dovetails with. Key partner. Oh! <laughs> could it be key and peel? Key and peel, the um, comedy duo, sort of sketch comedy duo, uh, where Jordan Peele, the now um, director acclaimed in his own right, um, started his on-screen career. Maybe not started, I don't know. In any case, uh, Key and Peele, I think, is one of the... I'm really not a big sketch comedy fan, but I think Key and Peele is one of the highest hit rates I've ever seen. Okay, I blank. Shakespeare-inspired novel written from the villain's perspective. It must be I... Iago, I would think. So does that give us anything here? Sounds good, but uh-uh. <laughs> Maybe yeah, no. It's a very modern formulation. To offset something is perhaps to negate it. And some customer service agents nowadays um, are chatbots, actually. Um, very annoyingly, I think. <laughs> but so it goes. Gosh. Um... And enthuse, right? Okay, I don't. That took me a while for some reason. But you, you could be very enthusiastic, gushing. You could gush about something, enthuse about the quality of the crossword puzzle. Blank matter. Does it matter or doesn't matter? Maybe one of those two. Well, a roll could be a bun, a bread roll. And after beginning. So if this were tea, 
after beginning, after beginning, post? Yes, okay. So in other words, post would be a word used to begin another word or phrase if you want to indicate that it is after something else. So um, I don't know, the post-war period, for instance, is uh, a beginning to war that means after the war. Something past or present. Perfect tense or something? Yeah, no, that's not really right. Um, let's let's look where we have some good solid crosses here. Painters, protectors. Um, well, so cloths make sense, but I'm not sure what sort of cloth. Pretense could be... I was thinking ruse, but that's not enough letters. Um, pre, uh, I don't know. What about this? Apple blank. Hmm. Uh, like Gen Z fans of classic rock, seemingly. Okay, well, the implication presumably here is that since those from Generation Z wouldn't have been born until considerably after the conclusion of the classic rock era, that's anachronistic or it's not going to fit. Um, seemingly. I don't know. I mean, an oxymoron would be putting it too strongly. Um, things often controlled with remotes. Televisions? Is that... I mean, that's very straightforward. It almost feels... Honestly, it almost feels too straightforward for a Friday puzzle. I'm very... I'm very skeptical of that. That's a good one. Doesn't look right. Butcher shop choices. I mean, it could be loins... Pork loin, for instance. World War II Dam Busters Group. I'm not sure offhand. I've probably seen it before, but I can't remember. Support against collapse with up. Shore up, maybe, or prop up. I, I'm just so skeptical about televisions because it's, I mean, honestly, just because it feels too easy. It feels too straightforward for, um, for a Friday puzzle, so I'm not going to put it. Guaranteed success. Ooh, there's something loud going on up there. I wonder if someone's some kind of machinery, I suppose. Um, guaranteed success, a slam dunk or a win-win situation or can't fail something. I'm not really sure. Okay, I'm not making much progress, am I? Try to persuade through lies. I don't know why I just looked at that one. Question asked by a surprise caller. Who is this? Or by a surprise caller. Who are you? I think I'm not quite understanding the situation being described here. Butcher shop choices. Well, probably will end in an S. Skimpy, scant, maybe? It's a reasonable synonym for skimpy. Something past or present. Home of the continental U.S.'s geographic center. Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, with the Number of letters and that A, I mean, is there any way it's Kansas? It's sort of plausible. It seems like it would be roughly in the right place. Some sneaks. I don't know. Could it be Deeks or Jukes or something? Is it a sports-related thing? Probably ends in an S, though. Foul Ball's Place, maybe. No idea. Swenson of Benson. Also no idea. This will be an actor. Uh, Anne. Or Inga, maybe, or um, I don't know. Anne would be the easiest name to spell right here, and that would work with. I mean, it's pl you could plausibly make words against it, but I just don't know. I don't actually. I'm just I don't actually know the knowledge. Fresh start gets a late start. Gets a late start. Sleeps in. Foul, ball, foul Ball's Place, maybe. What is this? Birthplace, birthplace of the Black Panther Party, Oakland, right? Foul Ball's Place. The stands? Does a foul ball go into the stands, maybe? Um, just get by is to eke by. 
and something past or present. Oh, principle? Past principles or present principles. Okay. There we go. Oh, no, I guess not. Never mind. Ah. Oh, participle. There we go. Past participle. Uh, participle. It's a uh, gr grammatical term. Okay, great. Um, that must be the answer. Is it? Is this Inga? Did I completely bafflingly stumble on a name like that? Maybe I somehow did. Maybe I've seen this name before and it was in the back of my mind. I don't think I recognize it. Roadrunner could be an engine, literally something that runs on the road. Your engine is running on the road. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's um, peanut butter cup, I suppose. And vintage, e.g., could be the year. So wine vintage or car vintage would be its year. Okay, what about this? Some sneaks are... Oh, Nikes, sneakers. Ah, Nikes or Nikes, as it's usually said in the UK here. Um, butcher shop choices. Okay, so that could still be loins, actually. Oh, oh, I see. Like Gen Z fans of classic rock, seemingly, they are born too late. And we now see that things often controlled with remotes are indeed not televisions. I was right to be skeptical. That's sort of a funny thing in that there's absolutely no reason somebody solving the crossword should say television almost certainly is not the answer here because it's a completely plausible answer. So I don't really know how to explain how to intuit that exactly. It's just that Friday is themeless puzzles tend, to, which Friday and Saturday are, tend to be less straightforward in the cluing. Um, we can see already that very little in this puzzle is strange knowledge, if you see what I mean. I mean, I don't know. Some of it is proper nouns like Peel or Inga but or Oakland. But but in general, it's not as the, the word doesn't or enthuse or I don't know, even chatbots or born too late uh, stands. I mean, m many of these things are not difficult bits of knowledge or concepts. It's really the cluing that makes it more difficult. And so that's why when I saw this television, this things often controlled with remotes, I just thought that is just too straight, a too straightforward a bit of cluing for a themeless puzzle, I think. But I, it's, you never know, it could, it could have been that, and then I would have looked silly. But I'm sure I have and will plenty more times, regardless. But your shop choice is right. So it could be, could be loins. Uh, elevators, that's not right. It's not nearly enough letters anyway. Uh, that's a good one. Oh ho or ooh or something like that. Oh, this could be doors, garage doors. There we go. All right. Another simple concept, but just a little bit less obvious than televisions. World War II dam busters. Oh, is it the RAF? Yes, the Royal Air Force. I think that that actually sounds very right. Dam busters. Yeah, I think that's the case. I hope that's right. Guaranteed success. Okay, so it does end with a hit. And support against collapse with up. It is shore up. There we go. Question asked by a surprise caller. Oh, guess who? Okay, I, I suppose I sort of was on the right track a little bit. But I was thinking of it maybe from the other direction. Which was wrong because it says question asked by the surprise caller, not by the person being surprised by the call. Guaranteed success. Surefire hit. There we go. Okay. I mean, here's an example, actually, where the cluing is about as straightforward a definition of the answer as you can get. It's just that it's a, because it's a three word phrase, there are sort of more, more things, there's just more possibilities that this could be. So, uh, that's why we have, I think in this case, some relatively straightforward cluing. The Rolling Stones blank a rainbow. Um, You know, despite myself having gone through a long sort of born too late classic rock fan phase, I actually never really got into the Rolling Stones in particular. So I don't actually know the answer to this, which is sort of surprising. All right. Parts of many breakfast buffets, something bars, cereal bars, puzzling start. Oh, we never actually looked at these acrosses, did we? I sort of quickly browsed through them. 
where catalysts produce reactions informally? Well, it probably ends with an S. I mean, in a scientific term, it could be pluralized in a different way, but since it's informal, I assume it won't be. What I mean in a different way is it could be a sort of, I don't know, a Latin word or something like that. But um, since it's since it's informal, I suspect it won't be. Rudely interrupting something into... Is that possible? Apple blank. Apple... I don't know. I mean, this might not be right. Ride in a way to na to nag somebody to ride them to be on their case. Common condiment with fajitas. Um, so fajitas is a uh, sort of Mexican American dish of seared, usually beef, but it could be other meats with on onions and peppers, all sort of seared on cast iron. Now, what would you... A common condiment could be pico de gallo or salsa or maybe guacamole or sour cream or what? Oh, pico de gallo. I just said that. Okay, sorry. And I didn't notice that it fit. So pico de gallo is a sort of fresh salsa. Um, okay. Apple, oh, is it Apple Incorporated? Is that the official name of the company that I think used to be called Apple Computer until relatively recently? Um offsets. Oh, did we have an offset somewhere else? I think we did. Um, we did. Oh, we had offset was negate. So here we have offsets, which is um, sorry, this is probably very obvious because so much of it is filled in. Uh, something interacts, re- Offsets. I don't know. Scientist for whom a part of the brain is named. I don't know. I'm not using that part of it, of the brain right now, apparently. Um, with sauce. I don't know. I'm sort of hitting a wall, aren't I? Quaint confirmation. Yes or something? I'm trying to think what would be a quaint way. Uh, if I looked at the downs, smarts. Smarts could mean intelligence in a colloquial sense, or it could mean it that hurt, that smarts, that hurts. Um, finger could be to name somebody. It could be a digit on your hand, a finger on your hand. Is that? I don't know. I mean, it, Fresh start, new day, maybe new something, probably with that W. Uh, fresh start could be a new day. What about this? What someone with anosmia cannot detect an odor. Okay, so this probably is new day, in fact, and well, not in fact, but in in likelihood. Get out of here is go home. There we go. Bad things for a lecturer to hear would be snores, I suppose. A university lecturer would not want to hear snores. Smarts could be stings. Okay, so it is in the sense that someone slaps you and you say, that's smarts, that stings. The Rolling Stones. Oh, She's a Rainbow. Actually, I can, now, I can think, now I can sort of think of that song in my head, now that I've said that. Um, try to persuade through lies. Um... Quaint confirmation. Oh, tis, as in, yes, it is. Tis, a contraction of it is. Oh, to shine on. Shine it on, you might say. With sauce would be in. Finger could be to name, right? I said name somebody. So could that be, what was this again? Scientist for whom a part of the brain is named. with sauce. Oh, insolently. Ah, so I was, I was wrong about this. Sorry. I really shouldn't have put that in. That was, that was presumptuous. So I was insolent. I was too insolent. Um, so with sauce, ins you said something sassily, saucily, insolently. Okay. Ah, to finger somebody could also be to blame them for something. 
Right. And scientists for whom a part of the brain is named. Have we looked at this? No. Dia de los blank, Spanish holiday. Reyes? Scientist for whom part of the brain is named. What part of the brain? I mean, <laughs> if it were Brina, it would be an anagram for name, which I kind of doubt. Um, I don't actually think I know the answer to that. Rudely interrupting. Oh, something in on, not into. Uh, slam a... Sorry, I, th this feels like it should be easier to get. And offsets, it really looks like this ends with interacts, which is what I've been thinking before, but then, oh, no, 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 not interacts, but counteracts. That makes much more sense. And so Broca is the scientist for whom a part of the brain is named. Okay, I don't think I know that scientist. I'll have to look that person up. And then, oh, painters, protectors, or drop cloths, maybe? Springing in on, rudely interrupting? The slightly, I don't, wouldn't really put, phrase that that way personally, but maybe. Oh, no, no. But that PC, no, I don't think it's that because that, that looks wrong against counteracts. Um, why don't I see what this is? A pretense is a guise. Surging in on? Oh, barging in on. Look at that. I was completely wrong about the way this is pluralized. This whole, everything about this answer um, all of my guesses were completely incorrect. So if you barge in on someone, so be very careful about making those inferences about what letters must be in a word that you don't actually have very many good ideas about, because that can be very dangerous. It's hard to remember that you put something in tentatively. What I should have done maybe was put that in. I don't remember the shortcut, but I should have used the pencil tool, which I never, ever, I just never use it. I should have put that in S in with a pencil if I was going to put it in at all. But uh, I didn't think to do that. Okay, where catalysts... And, and the reason I say that is because it would have reminded reminded me that I'm not certain. Where catalysts produce reactions. Okay, some kind of lab, a laboratory. And that explains... Oh, no, I was actually even more fundamentally wrong. I thought this needed to be plural, but I just didn't read the clue carefully. It doesn't. The catalysts are plural, but you could have many catalysts producing many reactions in a single location. Sorry about that. That was ridiculous. So not a chem lab. I mean, I suppose this... Actually, you know what? This probably isn't cereal bars because LH doesn't look right there. So maybe it is a chem lab. Um, omelet bars. There we go. Omelet bars. So this could be chem labs. So the omelet bars was for the bre parts of many breakfast buffets. To buttonhole is... Now, I can't remember, I think there's a term in sort of clothing vocabulary for a buttonhole, and I don't know if this is that or if it's buttonhole in the metaphorical sense. Parisian sweets, um, cherries maybe, or cher, uh, cher, mon chéri, yeah, mon chéri. Parisian sweets, or it could be chéri as in sweets, not plural, but rather um, just Hello, you know, hey, sweets, you, you're using it in that sort of casual way, even though you're referring to only a single person. Um, I'm not sure. I'm just going to remove the last letter to not show of authority metaphorically. Um, I think it's more likely to be E in this word. S doesn't look right at all, and it's probably just wrong to begin with. Blog, so this would mean my dear, or dear, you address somebody that way. Um, blog roll assort mint blog roll assortment links so is this not omelets after all a blog roll was something that was an incredibly outdated phrase i think that was something that i i think a blog roll was maybe something where you if you had a blog you would maybe link to a number of other blogs you liked reading on the internet and it was your blog roll i could be misremembering exactly what that was it was something like that B procedure. So in a brand name, this could be Oral B. Root vegetable with stringy stalks. Buttonhole. Get it. Oh, I don't think I saw this clue before. Or these. Actually, I skipped quite a few down clues. I'm sorry. Pick for picks in brief could be um, 
a DLR or an SLR, single lens or double dual lens reflex camera. Um, hypothesized could be said. I mean, that's pretty soft for hypothesized, but it's possible. Oh, celeriac is the root vegetable with stringy stalks. There we go. Hypothesized. Maybe just said. I mean, that's that's very vague for hypothesized, but why not? Puzzling start. Um, <laughs> across, literally the across clues at the start of a puzzle. In fact, what this one is, one across. Wow. There we go. All right. <laughs> Fittingly took me almost until the very end of the puzzle to find it. Buttonhole. Um, accost? Accord? If you accost, do you buttonhole somebody? If you accost them? Blog roll assortment. Okay, so sites, websites, right? There we go. Um, to get it is to relate. Oh, I get it. I relate, you could say. So accost, I guess to accost is to buttonhole. And then, ah, show of authority metaphorically is teeth. Yes. You, you showed some teeth. You showed some authority. And there we go. That is the Friday puzzle. Tricky Friday puzzle. Um, what in here was particularly difficult, do I think? Um, I mean, as is often the case with themeless puzzles, it's not as though it was absolutely packed with arcane knowledge per se, just tricky cluing. Although I didn't know Broca, I don't think. I don't think I knew Inga, even though I strangely <laughs> wondered if that was maybe the answer. Um, took me a while to get She's a Rainbow. I mean, I basically had to get the whole thing in crosses. Um, yeah, it was just, it was really more, l less sort of knowledge, knowledge issues and more, um, just some, just some tricky cluing, uh, things often controlled with remotes took a while, um, born too late took a while. Guessed on Kansas and that was correct, I guess, looking, looking back. Um, it was useful to know Oakland with respect to the birthplace of the Black Panther Party and, um, yeah, put myself on the wrong track in, in at least two ways with barging in on. Uh, but yeah, so some, some very difficult segments to this grade, even though it's hard to pinpoint exactly what was so difficult about them, just generally tough. I mean, that, that's, that is what's difficult about tricky cluing is that um, things that are very, that are very vague, it could be many things. I mean, um, Let's see, what could have been many things? I suppose most of these in the middle could have been at least a few things. Um, and things like smarts could, I mean, smarts just means a number of different things with very, very different meanings. And so the synonyms aren't going to be similar to one another. Uh, and so it just means until you have something certain, even if it's not necessarily that you don't know the possibilities for what this could be, you just don't know how to fill it in until you have some crosses that can disambiguate those possibilities. Anyway. Um, good solid Friday puzzle, I think. Tougher, I think, than last Friday's puzzle, if I recall correctly. And I actually don't think there were any corrections, per se, um, in yesterday's puzzle. I don't think I got anything wrong. Um, but I'll just read a few bits that people... Well, here's actually one thing that I just didn't know um, from Joe Zichterman that says, 28 across sparked a, a little fun fact, albeit not helpful to solve the puzzle. Iota, the word iota, meaning a small amount of something, comes to us from the Greek letter spelled J-O-T, pronounced Y-O-T, the smallest letter in the Greek alphabet. It was commonly used in Greek to denote attention to fine points of detail, similar to how we say cross your T's and dot your I's today. The word iota is largely believed to have entered the English lexicon as part of the translation of the Greek New Testament, specifically Matthew 5.18 in the Wycliffe Bible. The full phrase translated is, until heaven and earth pass away, not an iota, not a dot, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. And iota was a transliteration decision by Wycliffe from the Greek word yot. The meaning it is used for in English today carried over from the poetic way the Greeks used it. And extra fact, that Greek letter is also where we get the word jot, as in to jot down or to make small marks. That is absolutely fascinating knowledge. Thank you, Joe Zichterman. Did not know any of that, I don't think. Um, 
And then actually sort of related to that, I suppose, Andre de Simone says, random question to ponder. What percentage of crossword fills do you attribute to life experience versus crossword experience? I'm about two months into solving every day and on an 18 day streak of not having to Google anything or use the check feature. I feel as though I'm about 70 to 30 between filling based on things I know from my life versus things I know from doing crosswords and wonder where someone far more experienced would place the scale. It's a very good question. Um, I really don't know. I would imagine this differs from person to person. I think, I think most of it Maybe, honestly, maybe around a similar proportion to what you've said here, 70, 30, perhaps. Most of it is certainly things I know just from speaking English and having that vocabulary. Um, and then also just sort of arbitrary bits of reading and knowledge. I think the crossword is well suited to somebody like me who has a very broad, but perhaps sometimes shallow <laughs> range of interests. And in that I'm interested in many, many different things. Don't really consider myself very much of a specialist in very many things. And I think that probably um, lends itself well to the crossword. But I'd be curious where others um, fall on that. Obviously, there are many little bits of crossword knowledge that are incredibly specific. I mean, and often it's more convention than knowledge, like intuiting that television wasn't going to be the answer to the things with remotes today. It's not really knowledge. That's just intuition based on having solved crosswords before. Um, anyway, that's, that's, I'll probably, I'll probably, uh, leave it off there. We've passed half an hour or so in the video. So thank you for joining me today for this Friday edition of the Daily Solve, this Friday themeless puzzle. I hope you'll be back tomorrow for the second of our two themeless puzzles of the week, the Saturday puzzle. Could be even tougher than this one. So let's, uh, gird ourselves for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care.